What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included, Season 3. And just to reiterate on the apology for the episode before where I lost a lot of video footage. I'm not sure if you went through that, and if you did, thank you. But if you didn't, I don't blame you. Um, it was my fault. I spaz clicked delete on various different things. Anyway. Uh, moving forward, make sure you don't miss anything. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. It does help me and the channel. So the research is on the way for the next tier of rocket. And that tier of rocket is the large petroleum rocket, which gives us a rocket height of 35 tiles, which is the maximum in the game. The only upgrade from that is the cryogenic rocket, which is the liquid hydrogen fuel. The rocket size is the same, but it's faster. Now, I am going to try now starting to get into cryogenics and make it up. No, I haven't looked anywhere. Yes, I'm making this up as I go along. Comments are welcome, and I will use comments, but I don't like cheating and looking at other people's ideas. Now, this won't work simply because um, the idea here is this, this pipe, which is radiant pipe. I'm going to cool it. So we've got the machines that can cool liquid down. Each machine reduces the temperature of the liquid by negative 10 degrees so enough of those and a loop you will get down to well uh, absolute zero right uh, the problem is a liquid that actually can get to that temperature now i'm going to try this with uh, ethanol when i can get it we have it on the second asteroid obviously but i just need to get it over here so the idea is i'll pump ethanol through this it will go into the bottom section and cool down that chamber double insulated as you saw it will then go up above that room through a few three four five of them cooling machines dropping it by 50 degrees each time uh, and eventually it will cool that room down to negative whatever we can get to now, what I do know is that ethanol freezes at negative 110 degrees. The hydrogen liquefies from gas at negative 263 degrees. So it's not going to work for that. However, it will work for another project that is a bit further on. But we still need to do anyway. And that is, you can see there's a lot of chlorine there actually on the map on the second asteroid but we have chlorine stored on the first asteroid as well chlorine liquefies from a gas at negative 61 degrees now these numbers might be a couple of degrees out but don't worry uh, so yeah negative 60 ish degrees so that is an oxidizer we can use for the rockets i'm hoping the fact that it's more complex more difficult to get means that it's more efficient than the larger or the smaller fuel tanks of solid fertilizer which we're using currently fertilizer being created as we need it um, but it is a bit of pain in the backside also storing it especially even the larger chambers to get to the the, the further distances that we need to get to is taking up sort of three each tank takes up three rocket tiles if you use the large one so that's six rocket tiles um, and I'm pretty sure that is not going to be very good for us. So if anybody knows the math off the top of their heads or has done it in the past, then please do comment it below. I'm interested in what is the most efficient rocket in terms of getting the furthest distance but having like a drill cone set up. Because what I've noticed is when you use the drill cone, with the drill cone... Um, what's it called? The drill cone service bay and then fuel tanks and a storage tank for the actual resources you collect you run out of space there must be a way i must be missing something but yeah let me know back to reality and that is the farms are crashing at the minute our food is low but i'm not too worried half a million calories is not too shabby the reason it's not as high is because we keep chucking a lot of food into the rockets all of the rockets that I've sent out have anywhere from 300 to 600,000 calories in them. Which you can imagine is a lot more than they'll ever need. But it's just how I've been doing it. The Pincho Peppers have run out of... What is that? Yes. Uh, polluted water. Which is basically turd water. Is what it is. Just saying. Anyway... 
They are getting some, as you can see, but it's being separated between the fertilizer machines, which there's two of there, which it goes to first. Then it separates 50-50 between the sieves and the farms, which is nowhere near enough. It's never going to work. So I need to cut off all of them and see if that benefits us. Realistically, I need to sort out the water chamber, the one where the geysers are, and I mix them all together. I need to put the polluted ones in a chamber. I need to put the salt water one in a chamber and then the clean water one. So that then I can just pump directly from them infinite water sources and they can be used. The salt water one is critical because that is keeping our lettuces going, which have stopped. The polluted one will keep our pincho peppers going, which have also stopped. And the water one will just keep, well, topping up the storage. Because, let's face it, we know we're not going to run out of water in this series. This is going to take some building. I've just chucked it there. Now, if you're going to follow along and do anything like this, do it near your rockets. Why I did it here, I don't know. But remember, if this works, whether it be liquid chlorine or liquid hydrogen, my rocket's platforms are on the literal other side of the asteroid. So that's a lot of pipe. A lot of insulated pipe, actually. So yeah, do it close to your rocket setup. I'll hopefully remember to move this at a later date. For now, though, you can see it's quite simple. Each of these floors that I'm building is going to have one of the... Mm, I can't remember what they're called. About to, I'm looking for them now. There it is. Thermo Aqua Dongle. That's its official name. And then either side of that, I will put the thermostatic generators to help cool them down. Remember, these give off a crap ton of heat. Enough to melt pretty much anything. They will easily get to three, four, five hundred degrees within a few seconds of running unless you do something about it. So they are going to be locked in a room together where there will be thermostatic generators either side. And I'm also going to chuck in a loop of coolant liquid coolant that goes just around them to pull that heat away and help spread it out a bit more at the time of doing this it was science i had no idea but yes it works it works really well actually so cooling stuff down um certainly chlorine this setup is more than capable in fact you would only need three of those uh, coolers is more than enough five is overkill it will work for hydrogen making the cryo but yeah, we, we need super coolant to do that, and that's a way off at the moment. In the meantime, in terms of research, we are using data banks, which we now have ample of two rockets in orbit all the time. Uh, as you can see, they are that is their job. They are just literally printing us data banks. And when they have a decent amount, which apparently I've decided is now, I will land them. If I'm not mistaken, they have about 300 or so each, so they're immediately going to land. They can leave the rocket ship. It will um, be topped up with fuel oxidizer, but as you can see, it really uses nothing just going into orbit. Then resources will be dropped off on our asteroid to be able to be used. See there, nearly 300, 200, 220. There we go. So 220 and the other one will be about the same. So another 400 plus data banks in. They're not actually a problem for us anymore. Nice and simple. The issue for us is the third level of research, which is the Radbolt generators. Um, because a lot of the research that we get into now requires hundreds of that tier. And our singular setup is very, very slow. So we're going to have to improve that moving forward especially when we want to get to that engine because the petroleum engine that we require that we're looking to get to needs i think 400 or 400 350 400 of the applied science and each burst of rad bolts that we get improves that by 10 so the math there says that it's going to take many many cycles so i either need to wait a long time or increase the amount of rad bolts we are pumping out. And with them landed, restocked, and all of those data banks dropped off into the research facility, we can, of course, send these straight back into orbit. And rinse and repeat. 
Probably should do a bit of math on how many do we need to finish all of the research versus how many do we have. But where's the fun in that? Uh, they must have started at different times. That right one looked a lot faster, but they're, they're identically built, so... I am unlocking all of the food again, because to be honest, I'm not going to get bogged down with people having just fancy food at the minute. Especially when I'm sending them up into space. I should probably pay attention to the good food in here, so that... See, this 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 one rocket's got 1.5 million food. That's a bit overkill. But anyway, they'll run out of water and oxygen, or at least definitely oxygen, long before they run out of food. But as they're so close, they're in orbit, so they can land at any point. It's fine. Now, this one is our drill cone, and a first time for me anyway, trying this out. I had a few issues. The drill cone at the top, you need to load it with diamond. It holds 1,000 diamond, and that's what it uses to drill. It uses it over a certain period of time. As far as I'm aware, you can get about 20 tons of resources, roughly, from that one ton of diamond. Now, the cargo bay you can see there that I have installed on this ship holds 18 tons. So that means that the rocket will indeed fill up before it runs out of diamond, so... Yeah, there's no issue there. You can extend that using the drill cone bay, the upgrade bay, which adds an additional 1,500 diamonds. So that's 2,500 diamond total, which rough math says that that will let us do about 50,000 tons of... Yeah, 50,000 tons-ish. But if you haven't got storage for it, right, it's a waste, and it will just stop, and then you have to bring it back and unload it. Now, this is where I'm struggling a little bit to figure out what is the best combination of rocket to, to be able to send a rocket far out there and do the drilling and be able to get back. Or is the game forcing you to actually set up satellite planets or space stations? Because the rocketry extender does allow you to do space stations. Um, but I'm not planning on doing that in this series unless anybody asks for it for now it's a case of we're just getting the resources we need harvesting looking for the rarer resources like that neutronium type stuff uh, fluorine and graphite i think are the resources that i'm lacking at the moment and haven't found in space asteroids or in the pockets of resources that you can mine now, what I'm trying to do here is figure out where do I put the diamond. I'm not going to bore you with this because it was just a bug. Deleting the drill cone, re-adding it, immediately fixed it, and then they filled it full of diamond straight away. So you don't put it anywhere else. It does literally go in the drill cone itself. It has its own internal storage. And upon building it, you should see that, and you should see your duplicates, errands bringing that over. If you don't, I would suggest just remove it and add it again, and that will fix that problem. Slowly but surely, they are getting this done. The little bio bots are rummaging around, getting stuff done. The, the advantage to them is they work when the duplicates don't. The disadvantage to them is whatever task they do, it's at least half as slow as a duplicate doing it. They're slower at moving, they're slower at building, they're slower at digging, they're just, just genuinely slower. But they work 24-7, whereas the duplicates do not. So you can see now the plan here, and then that very top layer is just for the extra loop I mentioned, and that is it will rip out the heat here, and hopefully these three geothermal generators will eat that. The coolant then goes down, and it will just go past left on the right side of the machines, helping to fetch more of that heat away. So any excess heat that the generators aren't gaining from being at the side of it will be pulled away to them top ones might be overkill um you can see here that's what i'm trying to do i don't know why i made it so complicated actually i could have just gone straight down and then straight up but yeah drill rocket is ready to go now all it needs is the pilot to board the interior is done the gases sorry oxygen uh, water etc is top top the diamond is in there now and you can see it's actually animated and running it's got its location 
it just needs to travel. Now, it is a fair distance away, and then obviously when it gets there, it will need... I think it works out to be about five cycles to collect whatever it is collecting. This one's not so specific. I've just I've just opened it up and said collect everything that's there or as much as of everything that you can. Realistically, in the future, if you set the cargo bay to certain materials, it will only collect them. Most of the locations you go to, the higher percentage of the asteroid is something like sedimentary rock, granite. Basically resources you're probably not going to need. We've got 2 million of each of those resources because of the asteroid, this one that we've eaten and the one, the second one. So if you turn on only the resources that are relevant to you, then it'll only collect those, right? Of course, if that doesn't make up the full uh, capacity of your storage, you will be wasting a bit of space, but... Let me know in the comments. I, uh, for me, that's the way I'm doing it anyway. I only, if I don't, I don't want it to grab a load of sedimentary rock and then run out of space and not be able to bring back the fluorine or algae or something that is actual relevant to one of our bases. So, with all the liquids coming over from the second asteroid, a very simple sorting setup has been I've thrown in. Uh, really, it's clean water, polluted water, and ethanol is the only things that we should see. And all I actually care about is the ethanol. Polluted water can go into the system as normal, hopefully to water the crops that we were struggling with previously. Um, but the ethanol is what I'm actually after for some form of cooling. Of course, negative, uh, about a negative 110 degrees is where ethanol freezes. Uh, and for now, for us anyway, that is significantly colder than anything else we have. Oil, petroleum is about negative 40, negative 50. So. And it's certainly enough to get us liquid chlorine, but not anywhere near liquid hydrogen. Now, on the second asteroid, you can see we've, we're, we're, we're about done, right? We've cleared out the bottom to the base that we said we would. I've chucked in a door there. You can see I'm eating out there and to the left. That is only for uranium. Once the uranium is gathered, I want to make sure that anybody and anything that's there will be grabbing that and sending it back here so that all of that uranium is on our home asteroid to be used for whatever it may be in the future, specifically turning into an enriched uranium and then using that for the nuclear reactors for the rockets. Uh, basically, some, 50 kilos of enriched uranium onto the rocket gives your rocket 120 watts of power indefinitely for 50 cycles. Which is certainly better than wasting space for like batteries and solar panels, right? So, ripping out the wheeze warts. I'm not sure if this was a better thing or actually just doubling down on wheeze warts. But I'm putting in some of these UV lamps. We have uranium now. And it will use that up to speed up the process of gaining rad bolts. Realistically, though, I think I need to actually just set up a whole new building for it. Take it out of this room. This setup's not good enough for the speeds that we're needing to complete this research. And everything else is already ready and done. Even the data banks are coming at us like the clappers now. And there's no restrictions there either. So I'm going to need to build an entirely different room building whatever just for this type of research i think unless this surprises me and works better than i'm expecting it to but i'm not going to hold my breath unlike they are because there's a cloud of carbon dioxide there from where the tiles had captured the uh wheeze warts. right with those up and running i'm not entirely sure that those bottom ones are working as much as i want them to or how the efficiency is you can see there's definitely a lot more radiation being kicked out from there and they are indeed putting out more radiation than they was previously but again you could increase that by having more wheeze warts or more collectors around the same amount of wheeze warts, right? Because it doesn't actually use up an amount of radiation and then nothing else can use it. If you have multiples in a row, they will still collect the same amount. Also, remember, they fire through each other, so you can't block the rad bolts with the actual collectors themselves. Bit of a weird setup there. I obviously tried to make it go through that wall, which is never going to happen. Note to self as well. If you're doing it like this, which looks okay, but it is on them bottom two tiles, which means if somebody stands in the way in between these uh, reflector and uh, research machine, 
the rad bolt will hit the person, damage them, and then you've wasted that 50 rad bolts. So, again, this setup is better than it was before, but it's not going to be a solution for us moving forward. However, to see what we do decide to go with moving forward, which I'm going to say is going to require at least 10, if not more, of the rad bolt collectors, radiation collectors. You will have to see that in the next episode because we are at time. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.